Hello, everybody. Sandra McGillis is with us today, and she is skilled in so many different healing methods and is comfortable speaking about a wide range of topics. Today, we hit on many things, including ways of changing your story or triggers when put in a hypnotic, theta, or, or relaxed state. We talk about raising the vibration of the individual or the self, which in turn then raises the vibration of really everybody, the collective consciousness. Really hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much. And oh, don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. Take care. I had to bring this back out to others because it's just amazing work. And I do quantum work beyond quantum healing. I do a multitude of different certifications, but I don't get caught up in it because not one is better than the other. It's just different ways of going into relaxation technique. And really the bottom line is, is when you're ready to make that commitment, you will make that commitment and you will align the universe where you will get the practitioner that you can just trust. So when you're talking about the grid and the, the collective network, whatever we work with it within ourselves, we're working in helping that net. Yes. And so more and more people are stepping into this authentic arena of like, okay, this, this, this stream is not assisting me in my life's path. I'm not happy. I'm not feeling good. You know, everybody I go to wants to go this way. I think I'm going to step out of the box and go over here. And then they find through their experiences that it has changed them in ways they can't even explain. Right. And the ways that they can't even explain lead them to actually change the physical reality of their life. They may not want to live in the demographics they are. They may no longer want that job that they have. They may no longer uh, be compatible with the relationship. So lots of things change because something that you can't describe changes from within you. So I was looking over your, your website and on it, it mentioned, it says so many tools that helped me to jump paths. I began as a massage therapist, um, as a Reiki master, a life spiritual coach, past life regressionist, a hypnotherapist, or you worked with hypnotherapy, later adding additional um, advanced Reiki and quantum healing and ho opinopono. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's oh, pono, pono. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> and and more um, life regression and meditation techniques, all of which helped me to hone my skills and bring in the gift of sight. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you tell me briefly how you got on this path? Why are you interested in this? Why are you doing this? Sure. Um, well, just to give a little life history, you know, I'm one of five kids, and I just really wasn't quite the same as, as they were. Um, I always had the ability to understand energy, people, things beyond words, beyond expressions. And I kind of became an observer. So as I got older, and some things occurred, um, and I found that massage was so helpful in my own healing that I decided I had to go into it to give back. And in investing in my time to go to massage school when I'm in my 30s with small children was not an easy feat because my, my husband at the time was not supportive of it at all. And it was before, you know, it was in the 90s. Massage was not very popular. And it challenged my intellect a lot, a lot. And I found that I did learn differently than others, that I was really much smarter than I thought I ever was. Um, I have a lot of street smarts, but not the intellect. And the hands-on work just came so naturally. And so I found that working with people to help them feel better was such a reward, a heartfelt reward for me. And during that time, I was self-taught in a lot of energy work. So beings were coming into to sessions for the first time I, that in my life that I could remember that they were there. Um, it could be their ancestors that were coming in to assist me in their, in their healing work. It could have been um, uh, just another being that I would not, not have known the word galactic at that time. 
uh, because we always we we put them under the umbrella of angelic. So um, I learned a lot of energy work there, and then you know it was just opportunities that came along that allowed me to go deeper within myself. So for example. Nice. Um, an opportunity to have a past life regression session when you're like, what is that exactly? And then you go into it and you find such a profound experience within yourself and it, it catapults you to the next level and the next level and the next level. And um, I learned Reiki, Sakim and Sakem in the 90s as well, which is symbol energies. Um, ener uh, okay. Each symbol has its own energetic frequency and signature to it. Um, and Sakim and Sakem is a little deeper in that in the Egyptian uh, versus Reiki, which is Japanese. Dr. Asui is the one that brought that to mainstream. So um, really just through my own encounters, wanting to open the window and learn more about who I am and, and, and the profound effects that it had on me and the building blocks of that and wanting to be able to give that back to others in the ways that I learned it and how it worked for me. And so I just built upon certifications and, and so on and so forth. And here we are. So I wanted to circle back around. Um, sure. At the beginning, you mentioned that, you know, many of these techniques, all of which help you, all of which help you to hone your skills um, and bring the gift of sight and I wanted to touch base on that because for me, um, that word sight is important. Um, I think for different people, it means different things. For you, you know, I, I know you're very intuitive and you see stuff and you connect to stuff and, um, and, and that's, that's great. We'll get into that a little bit more deeper. For me, it's more of just a sense of being more comfortable in my skin, being more open, being more confident. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've come a long way these last couple of years, and it's because of my exploration of many of these different modalities and, and methods, and they just kind of open you up and allow you to feel more you. Well, you know, and, and it's interesting that you say that, that because, you know, when I say sight, um, there's so many ways you can describe sight. It, it, you know, we have our physical sight that we see things, right? And we have our inner sight, you know, which a lot of people want to put into the sixth sense, you know, the sixth sensory. Um, and that comes in many different forms. I think for me, um, it goes to, to, to a couple different levels. One is your empathic sight. And so you empathically are those who um, are, are you? usually very sensitive and um, pick up on things they can't explain. But really empathic is uh, your first, it's your first way of learning information when you're born. And so uh, we have our brains that develop, but then we also have this empathic sight and, and it's a way to filter information and energy through it, through the body and allow you to process it and come out with your, your ideas, your, perceptions, your conclusions and see beyond. And then there's things like the kinesthetic site, you know, so you learn through your fingertips. So, you know, in massage therapy, you can, you can feel what's happening and empathically that energy is coming back through the body and processing and you kind of know where to go or what's happening, hmm. maybe not just on a physical level, but what's happening on an emotional level. And then we have things like our, our clear cognizance, where it's like, I don't know how I know that. I just know that. So everything is about this inner sight. It's your innate God antenna, right? But we're generally taught to override that because there's no scientific concrete thing that says, yes, that's correct. We're, right. we're, we're taught what we learn from books, you know? Right. So we've been taken away from this innate inner sight um, that we all have that gut feeling, that visceral response, that heartfelt um, information that filters through us. So when I wrote that about the site, I was writing about that too, but I was also writing about the ability to have the site 
to to see things um, beyond the prism of what we see them in black and white with the little color um, from our physical eyes. Right. Very so, well put. Yeah. yeah. So what what has happened for me is every time I've leveled up and I've gone into more of the innate God self and living by the intuition only, right? And not allowing too much grease on the the hamster wheel uh, right. uh, to spin and get my nervous system out of whack. And so with saying that, then I'm able to start seeing symbols in the air. I'm able to start seeing orbs. I'm able to start seeing energy moving like rain. And then I was able in 2020, when we had this, you know, everyone's got to stay at home thing. I was excited because now I had the time to literally go out and start practicing because everything we have to learn how to skill it and hone it in to, be, to master it. And so it's not just something that it's like, boom, light bulb on, you know, whoa, everything's, you know, rainbows, right? It's not like that. Um, you work on it. And so you have, and then there's an understanding, a language with all of it as well, because everything, you know, light, sound, all that's energy. And so I was able to start honing in and then seeing my guides and so on. So it's helped me develop my physical sight. And then it allowed me to practice eyes closed, eyes open, and see that I was seeing the same thing with different contrast. Yeah. Well, I, I think also, you know, many of these uh, healing modalities, um, sometimes you can just experience something and it'll just crack you kind of like wide open yes. and you'll have experiences and then you'll create now this new awareness. And then from that, you can explore that even deeper. Um, and that's, that's, you know, again, what like Karma Hub is largely about. It's about exploration. It's about self-discovery. Um, so I wrote this little thing here. Um, it says, if you approach these healing modalities with curiosity, instead of skepticism, it will take you further into self-empowerment. Most mm -hmm. people don't fully believe or understand that this practice of intention or quantum entanglement and, and how it works, but it does work. And more and more people's shells are being cracked open and lifted with the readoption of this ancient understanding of many of these ancient methods of energy work intention, which I guess is all centered around quantum entanglement and quantum physics and all that ridiculousness, sure. however all that works. But I think as more people sink into this understanding, our society actually will completely start to shift as a whole because it's such a huge step. And I, I think that step is being taken. It's a complete paradigm shift. What I thought was reality 10 years ago is like, not at all. I mean, I, 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 I believe in this, this collective consciousness net and more and more people are starting to believe in that collective consciousness. And yes. um, at a exponential rate, I believe more and more beneficial things will, will occur when people realize that thoughts are things and you can manifest your future. Well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go a little step further with that because that's a really okay. a, a big, important point. Um, you know, we look at ourselves as individuals and we're responsible for our individual selves and in, in the collective part of it right um and then we have our our ego and then we have our other compartments of our mind and then scientifically we're told we only use a fourth of our mind you know okay well what else is rattling around up there right, <laughs> can we right. figure that out and much of that is in the spiritual arenas it yes. truly is and and scientifically there isn't equipment that's going to be able to test a lot of that so when you're talking about the, the grid and, the, and the, the collective network, whatever we work with it within ourselves, we're working in helping that net. Yes. And so more and more people are stepping into this authentic arena of like, 
okay, this, this, this stream is not assisting me in my life's path. I'm not happy. I'm not feeling good. You know, everybody I go to wants to go this way. I think I'm going to step out of the box and go over here. And then they find through their experiences that it has changed them in ways they can't even explain. Right. And the ways that they can't even explain lead them to actually change the physical reality of their life. They may not want to live in the demographics they are. They may no longer want that job that they have. They may no longer uh, be compatible with the relationship. So lots of things change because something that you can't describe changes from within you, right? And so the more people that begin to experience this, the more the collective net begins to open up. So when you when I said the word Reiki back in the 90s, first off, I would get, so what's that? What, well, I, you do something different. I mean, I know you're doing massage and stuff, but what? And I, oh, it's just energy work. It's just energy work. And then finally, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to name it. <laughs> it's Reiki, you know, just, right. and then I right. would still get, what's that? You know, so yes. now more and more people hear about Reiki and, and it's, yeah. and it's, it's such a beautiful um, energetic symbols with codes that help in, on so many levels. Again, you can't scientifically explain a thing about it, right? But it's in hospitals now. It's in so many different things, just like acupuncture. I mean, if you lived in China and in Asia, acupuncture has been around for millenniums, you know, but who wanted to recognize that in the Western world? So that's become it. And so the same thing is going on with all these other modalities that are becoming more available and more mainstream mm -hmm. because we're finding out, you know, if we look at our, just even our medical community, you know, all the, the things that come in the little brown bottles that you have to go pay for at the drugstore, we're finding out are not always in the best interest or, or we found out 20 years later that it wasn't good for that at all. And now it's created this. So we've had enough time in that arena where people are like, I don't want to be on that platform anymore. I want to be on a different platform. And then we fast forward to just what's gone on the last couple of years. And although people were inconvenienced with a lot of it, and there was a lot of fear and scare, there was a lot of inner calm and change because people were able to reach inside themselves and discover, I don't want this anymore. I want something different or had an opportunity to say, I'm going to watch a Reiki YouTube, or I'm going to, I'm going to do a different yoga poses, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to look at cranial sacral, or I'm going to look at tapping, or I'm going to look at this and this and that. And then it's like, I had no idea these were so amazing and that there were so many out there. And then when you're also confined to the house, people want to talk. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Can we do this as a group? And then you get groups together. So we're definitely changing the universal net, yes. the grid, the web that had us really programmed and locked in there that this wasn't cool. This wasn't for the pretty people. This was for the weirdos. This was for the odd people, you know, right. and that's not the way it is. And now it's, it's for everybody. For everybody, because <laughs> everybody right. gets prettier when they do it, you know, inside they, and out. They kind of do. You're right. They do. they do. So you do many different methods. So what are some of the uh, modalities that you offer? And and I guess some of the the, the stigma or or fear kind of uh, centered around some of those modalities and how you get around that. Sure. So. Um, Let's just talk about hypnosis for a second. You know, the, the, that's been around for a very, very long time. And, and many people that were using it in their practice were run out of town because the other part of the community couldn't, couldn't succeed if this little modality of hypnosis succeeded, right? But over many, many, many years of perseverance of medical practitioners, they've been able to get it to, it's accepting, it's accepted. So one of the fears about that is, oh, you're going to get into my mind and rearrange things. You're going to change things. So I'm going to be, someone's going to say quack and I'm going to go duck, 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 you know, or whatever. Um, and it's not, it's not, you know, your theater or your um, on stage hypnosis. 
there's so many different levels to it and your practitioner makes the biggest difference. And then with regression work, not everybody because of religious belief systems believes that you've been here before. So if you've uh, not sure you believe that you've been here before, then why would I let you get into this space that I don't know anything about? Because a lot of people don't understand the way the brain functions. You've got 95% that has everything in, in storage. And then you have 5%, which is your conscious. So really we have to remember from in just even in our mother's womb, until the day that we take our last breath, we're on a 24 hour camera surveillance. Right. Everything, all of our sensories are taking in everything, whether we're consciously even aware of what's happening. And again, that 95% gets stored. And so it can affect and sabotage and help and hurt so many different things within your life. So if things are not working for you, and you can find a practitioner that you can trust. They're going to use hypnosis type techniques. I call them relaxation te techniques because I'd like to stay away from branding and names, honestly. Okay. Um, and I just call it regression work versus past life regression because past life could be last week. It could be last year. It could be a decade ago. It could have been something that occurred when you were a small child. Um, but all that, maybe you didn't understand it and you carried anger and the anger isn't just in your mind or in your emotional body, it's now in your physical body. So when you're going in and working through this, you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that the hip pain came from something that occurred when I was three that I don't even remember, right? And then when you're going through you know, a regression session, you're in a relaxed state so that the gatekeeper between the conscious and the subconscious goes and takes a lunch break and allows so you, you just go to into be in what theta state. Is that right? You go, generally? you're going in, you're going into, you're going into a very deep alpha theta state. Yes. Okay. Depending on what you're doing and where you're going. Some people will just be in, in, in an alpha state. So you've got beta, which is your, you know, 10 and two, right. And then you've got your alpha, which is your, I'm home, I'm relaxed, I'm creative. And then, but you have la different layers of all of that. And then theta is going to be in this dreamier, really quiet, super relaxed, like just like in almost in and out of wanting to fall asleep. That's how relaxed you can get. And so it allows for you to process memories in there, hmm. whether you can technically recall them or not, you can recall them during a session with a trusted practitioner. And so it just brings up so many things that are hidden in there that can be resolved, have forgiveness, give it love. Um, and in some practices, they'll change the outcome, like have you go back in and say, okay, well, let's redo that scenario. How was that scenario? Okay. And then in other things, you're looking at something from your adult self that may have occurred as your child self, where you don't have the where for all and the wisdom to have understood that that wasn't as painful or as personal as you carried it on to be, you right. know, and hurt your relationships. And so, so, I do so in the state, you, can, them, you yes. can, in the state, you can not only um, recall these memories, but you can kind of change the emotional um sensation around the memories is that right correct you can kind of neutralize the memories they won't go away there's still a memory but the uh, uh, emotional triggers that are surrounding that memory you can kind of neutralize and you know throw it away <laughs> absolutely it and, and it, it, free, it, it frees you from the chains that have 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 kept you bound by something that you didn't even know might have occurred in the way that it occurred and then where you're storing it mentally physically emotionally etherically spiritually so you're able to release a lot of that and you like you said you're 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 not you're not forgetting the memory but you're bringing the memory to life where you can put it to rest and then it no longer haunts you on a daily basis and pain begins to release and 
you become a lot lighter. And, you know, once you open that window up, you just want to keep going because the older you get, the more, the more stuff and clutter and storage and cobwebs you've got up there. And so the, I had such success going into it myself from a patient client perspective that I just, I needed, and I had to bring this back out to others because it's just amazing work. And I do quantum work beyond quantum healing. I do a multitude of different certifications, but I don't get caught up in it because not one is better than the other. It's just different ways of going into relaxation technique. And really the bottom line is, is when you're ready to make that commitment, you will make that commitment and you will align the universe where you will get the practitioner that you can just trust. So in a session, scary things might come up and you might fear, oh, I don't want to go back in that. That was horrible. And so the practitioner can breathe with you and hold that space and anchor you down energetically and then let you go in as the observer and float over and around a situation until you can get yourself comfortable where you can see it for what it really was. You can see it from kind of an outside perspective. Yes, a whole different angle. Yes. Yeah. Well, I actually had a, uh, a regression, not a past life regression, but a regression uh, a couple months ago. And I found it very interesting because, you know, the person spent a lot of time with me and uh, got me into a, a relaxed state. So it's the first time I have done this, uh, this hypnosis. And I was, you know, I, I hear stories about, you know, they get you hypnotized and you dance around like a chicken on stage, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, and what I was kind of surprised by is while she's giving me these commands, while I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually just kind of being polite. She's asking me to lower my hand, my right hand down, and I'm lowering it down, not because I'm hypnotized, but just because I'm doing as she's asking me to do. And she had a number of other exercises and I, I did as she asked me to do. Um, so in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not hypnotized. Nothing's really going on. But then there was a, a point probably about 45 minutes in where she said, you know, uh, lower your right hand or left hand. And as you do that, just let all of the worries, all of the stuff that's going on in your, in your world, just let it go. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to lower my left hand. And I'm going to think that my, all my stuff, I'm just going to let it go. Well, what I was really surprised by, I mean, really floored by was as I lowered my left hand, I started getting really emotional. I started giving, getting even more emotional. And by the end, I felt light. I felt relieved. I felt like I had a big cry and just evaporated a bunch of crap so it, it was just it, it was interesting to me that i was very conscious i was very aware and yet it was very effective and not at all what i had believed hypnosis would be like yeah and thank you for saying that because it is true you're fully conscious and aware and and the key the key here is to be able to trust enough where you can get relaxed it's just like when you get up you're in a hypnotic state when you wake up in the morning you're in a hypnotic state before you go to sleep. You're in a hypnotic state when you're driving and daydreaming. Most people are in it, and I'm going to go with men here, are in a hypnotic state when they have the remote control in their hand, they're watching television, they're focused in on that, and nothing else is happening around them. Hmm. You just go, you go into hypnotic states when you're watching movies because you're just going right into, you, there's so many things now, and, and children, you know, they're born where they're in the Delta, they're in the sleep state for the first two years. They're literally in the sleep state. And then from two to about seven, they're supposed to be in the, in the theta state. So very dreamy, the imagination, they have friends, they're playing different games, they're making up things, they're creating things. And then, then they jump up into the alpha state at seven. But if you'll notice the programming of the world is let's get kids busier, younger, get them out of that, you know, and you, you wouldn't normally come out of a theta going into an alpha unless you have a traumatic event. Hmm. And so um, 
anyway, yeah, all this work just really helps you be a better you. It's just a different way of, you know, traditional therapy might not be helping someone. So how do I do things where I can, and, and emotional releasing is very, very important. And that tells you right there that you're trusting who you're working with. You know, if you want to, if you want to cry a little, you know, right. True. Because we walk around very gated and guarded 10 and two, most of the time, got to do, got to do, got to do. Right. Another thing I found very interesting about the uh, uh, hypnosis session that was explained to me, because in this particular, this particular practitioner, she is known for doing past life hypnosis. And again, that's not what I did with her. Um, but she was explaining a little bit about past life. And she said, you know, it really doesn't matter if you think it's real or not. There's something in your subconscious that thinks it is. And it associates some sort of story or dialogue with maybe a trauma. And you can go back, like we talked about earlier, you can go back, reassociate the emotions around that event and, and change it so that trauma effectively, or the emotions surrounding that trauma effectively go away. But what was so cool is, so it's, so it's possible that there is not prior lives and you're not actually delving into prior lives and changing stuff from, you know, if you were, you know, in other lifetimes. She says, however, she often records her sessions uh, for her clients. And when the clients are, are, are done and they're listening to their, their session, um, you know, sometimes they will have written in hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics. Sometimes they speak in a language they've never known. Sometimes even physical things happen, like their eye color changes. Um, I mean, so real, real things happen that indicate that there is prior lives. And it's just kind of neat. You know, it is. And, and as you're talking, you know, it brings me to the point of, you know, a couple of my sessions when I started in on the 90s with someone on past life. And, you know, um, I'm in I'm in the session. And next thing I know, I'm in a room and I know that it's not this century. And I can describe my dress and my hands. And I was very angry and I could feel the anger. And I was angry at not being able to speak up. And when I did, I was going to lose my life over it. And then the next vision within that session was me walking out and there was a noose and I walked wow. right into the noose and then everything went dark. And this went on a couple of times. Now, do I remember being in that lifetime and that occurring? Absolutely not. But the point of it is, it didn't matter if it was past life or not. What it was saying is that something was making me always feel like I couldn't speak. I was either going to get in trouble. It always affected my fifth chakra, my throat, mm -hmm. it expressing myself, whether it was emotional, physical, physiological, whatever it was. But it just showed me a couple different scenarios of in a couple different sessions that it was a pattern. And so now how did I clear that pattern and how did I, mm -hmm. uh, how was I able to work with that chakra and understand my vocals and then understand the value of my vocals and then to release any fear of expression through, through that. So that's a really good point that you, that you make because we could very easily have had them and we could very easily be, that's just a different scenario to get to the same answer that we needed right. because that worked with us at the moment you know what i mean right. so I, I had a session recently uh, it was actually just a 15 minute preview that really kicked my butt and it was a guy who was working through the akashic records do you know anything about the akashic records i do um Holy moly. It was, yeah, it was, it was an open house at a wellness center, not far from here, from, from Baltimore. Um, and again, it was a 15 minute session and he didn't really speak much aside from uh, light language is what he was speaking. And um, it, it, you know, it sounds like gibberish to me and then interwoven occasionally he would utter some words of English. And whenever he did that, 
everything he was saying totally resonated with me. So he was on the right track, at least with his words of English. Um, and the other words, the um, light language, I mean, I felt like I was being pulled in every direction um, energetically. It was really, really intense. And after that short session was over, I mean, I couldn't, I could not have driven home if I wanted to. Um, I stood in the hallway of this wellness center and people were kind of coming up to me and checking on me because I was leaning up against the wall and holding onto the countertop. Um, and I stayed there for a while and, and told people about my experience with this crazy dude over there who's, <laughs> you know, working, working through the Akashic records. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and a couple of those same people were like, oh yeah, I, you know, I had a session, a couple sessions with him and he changed my life or I got very emotional uh, in a, a very positive way through a session. So I got a lot of uh, amazing feedback about that particular person. Um, but it really kicked my butt and he didn't really speak a whole lot of it. You know, I was like, so what's your interpretation of what happened? He says, you know, I don't do interpretations. You got what you got. Hope you enjoyed it. I was like, you know, I was kind of holding on to the counter as I was leaving the room. I was like, I, mm. I think I did. I mean, it certainly was, <laughs> it was, it, it physically affected me um, in a significant way. And that to me is fascinating. And, and that's, it's that sort of stuff that fascinates me in such a way, you know, uh, same with uh, um, a hypnotherapy and, and so many of these other modalities. Um, because I still, even though I've been in this rabbit hole for 10 years, I still have such a hard time wrapping my head around how intention affects the human body. Yes. And the good that it could do for it. it it's all very curious to me and it's really fantastic. And um, I'm just here to urge as many people as possible to try different modalities and just be open to them and have fun with them. Um, Cause I, I think people will find some pretty magical shifts in their life if they do it. Yeah. And there's a couple of things I'll say to that is, you know, um, the value of human touch that's been scientifically proven to do what it does, right. A hug okay. can, can increase your, your hemoglobin, which is you know, the oxygen to your red blood cells. It, we, do you think people knew that before they had massage and touching healing work and all that? No, they just know it works. Right. But everyone's looking for some kind of scientific thing to, to, to make it believable because we've been entrained to that's how you learn. And that's what makes it acceptable. If it's proven, then it must be what it is. Right. right. And then everything else has vibration. So Think about back in maybe the movies you saw of the cavemen, oh, I, oh, I, you know, but they understood what each other were saying. And then it was put into different languages. It was put into different languages, depending on where you lived in the world. And, and so light language is vibration. It's a, right. it's listening and speaking through the heart of the sound of the vibration. And then that vibration that comes out may have a vibrational for you one way, for me another way, for someone else another way. And then when you were just saying that, they were showing me, my guides were showing me a picture of one of those giant gongs and you hit it and it's like, you know, and it echoes out. And then all of a sudden it goes back in, but the whole time it's bling, your body's like, you know, like, whoa, you know, and then all of a sudden it stops and you're like, Wow, that was amazing. It's how we do our notes and our instruments and music. It's how it's how a guitar might sound different than a banjo and how a piano might sound different than, you know, another instrument. And they're all the, the key notes and the vibrations. And it goes back to the same thing with symbols and goes back to the same thing of where memory is stored and how it's stored in your body. And, and how do we open all of this up? Because everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to release the baggage that they were carrying right. known and unknown. Everybody wants to be more whole and not have so much stuff and clutter in their lives. People are just really looking to just 
get rid of everything and outsource all of it and then just have little suitcases and just simplify, just keeping things simple and all these modalities help you find those inner spots. And one modality might work for one person and one modality might work better for another. It just depends because there's so many modalities. Well, that's why I feel like, you know, a lot of these modalities are based, well, the principle to many, maybe most of these modalities um, is, I believe, around ancient teachings, like ancient methods. Mm -hmm. And so we're like revisiting these ancient philosophies with a new, maybe technological uh, twist, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so I think we're rediscovering the past. And I believe it's probably better for us than maybe some of these chemicals we find in boxes. Yes. Um, you know, not to say that the chemicals don't work because they can work very well, but- sure. um, Maybe there's something else we should start picking up, um, you know, other practices we should start trying and be more aware of. Yes. And, and then also to understand that everything's not a quick fix. So when you're looking at some of the chemical based compounds, you know, right. they all came from natural compounds, you know, okay. one form or another, but then they're, they're supposed to deliver things faster and better and quicker and easier to achieve is sort of like a microwave meal versus, you know, a home cooked, took me hours to prepare this right. and make the plate kind of thing. So um, these modalities might take just a little bit longer, but I, you'll get to higher places of consciousness and higher places of happiness and coherence between heart, brain, everything else that you'll just be like, wow. This is what it feels like to have true homeostasis, which is balance, without all the interferences that have been created and placed in front of us just in the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we look back at the way our grandparents lived, um, you know, they worked around the, the moon and the sun, right? And they lived off the land and they read and when the sun went down, they were in bed in about an hour. And when the sun came up, they were up and they didn't have all the grocery stores that we have. So we, we've learned to have all these quick fixes. So when you get into these modalities, we're learning that they are a lot deeper and longer lasting, but it may take us a couple sessions to actually appreciate that. I agree. I agree. Well, this has been wonderful. Is there um, anything else that you'd like to hit on before we start to wrap things up? Uh, no, I just think that everybody owes it to themselves to understand that everything's vibration, everything's light, everything's energy, everything is really, it's really love. And when you get out of love, then you get into that density. And when you get into that density, then you compound that with uh, um, all the things in those categories that might not be recognized while they're occurring, but over time they are. And then we have these heavy blankets on us and then we wake up and we're like, I don't, why do I feel this way? You know, I'm not, I said, I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't going to be like that. I wasn't going to act like that and, or feel like that. And there's so many different things out there that we can do to help elevate ourselves and ascend to maybe fifth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, master's degree, whatever we choose to do with many different modalities in different avenues that we didn't think we were going to go in because we were are living a life that we were told we were supposed to live. And we don't ever get to that authentic heart, God source, the antenna self, and the breath of the life that we're here to live. <laughs>